Hello, I'm uh, Paul van der Heijden. I'm a chairman and professor of the Department of Otolaryngology and Head Neck Surgery at the Antwerp University Hospital, University of Antwerp in Belgium. Our research has been focused for a long time on the inner ear and the consequences of pathologies of the inner ear going from genetics to cochlear implantation and we're very intrigued about this evolution the last two decades on the field of cochlear implantation and what we could bring to our patients. We can ask ourselves is it really worthwhile to put an electrode deep into the cochlea, into the second turn. For convenience we'll, we'll call it the apical region, but in fact it is the second turn. Is it really worthwhile and what do we gain by putting electrodes in that region? When we look at the cochlea as nature has conceived it, there is a second and a third turn. The aim of nature is to provide low tone frequencies to the patient so that we can perceive that. And we all know the advantages of perceiving these low tones. It's just more pleasant to listen at, with better speech in noise, we can understand better or get an idea of rhythm and prosody in, in noise. And so we did a number of experiments to know whether electrodes in the second turn, and you look at the right side, we will denote them with the red electrodes. The red electrodes in the second turn, when we stimulate them, are they going to give another sensation to the patient? Are we really able to provide these low tones to the patient in comparison by stimulating only the basal turn on this scheme, the electrodes with the blue color. I just start already with the conclusions of our experiments. The spiral ganglion has cell bodies that indeed extend until the second turn, until 650 or 700 degrees of the cochlea. When we test these spiral ganglions electrically with electric evoked potentials, we indeed get equally good responses as stimulating in other parts of the cochlea. When stimulating these electrodes, patients get that, can get a very clear perception of low tones. And it's only possible by stimulating in the second turn and stimulating at low frequencies. When doing so, patients have a better speech understanding in noise and it is also reported that there is a better music quality when they listen with this type of activation of electrodes on top of the basal electrodes. But when we change an algorithm, brain needs time to adapt. We need a lot of time, so it takes 12 months at least before getting the advantage of using these apical electrodes. And last but not least, when doing cochlear implantation, we need to get the electrode in the apex, and so size matters. Let us come to the first statement, the spiral ganglions. We did an extensive literature review over more than 15 publications on histology of the cochlea and the localization of the cell bodies. And we would get a confirmation of already somewhat older drawing of Otto, where we see that the ganglion extension of the spiral ganglion bodies is from the basal turn up to the end nearly of the second turn. So we indeed have cell bodies in the second turn, contrary what sometimes has been claimed that the cell bodies do not extend in this second turn. Okay, this is what histology proves. We come to the second statement. We can electrically stimulate these cell bodies. For that, we did a multicenter study with the hearing group. And we divided the cochlea into three parts, with a basal part, a middle part, and an apical part. And we started stimulating in this apical part 
and recording also in the apical part and we compare the characteristics with the electrically evoked responses when stimulating in the basal part of the cochlea, in the basal part and the middle part and recording also the electric evoked potentials in this region. So we compared the three sections of the cochlea. At the left you see here the results of the basal, the middle and each time the apical part. This is now the current amplitude, the current units needed to get a result. So these are the thresholds and as it is obvious in this graph there is no difference in thresholds between the apical, the middle and the basal part. Also the other characteristics like the slope, the input-output function, the slope by increasing the amount of current and the amplitude recorded, we see that this slope for basal, middle and apical turn is quite similar. Also when we test the recovery time, how long is the refractory time to stimulate again? Then also here we see that there is no difference between stimulation in the basal part, in the middle part and in the apical part. So our conclusion is that electrically these cell bodies in the apical turn can be activated as well as in the other parts of the cochlea. Now when stimulating in the apical turn does this give another sensation? And for that we used our patients with single side deafness. That means they have a normal hearing from one side and they have a cochlear implant at the other side. We used a 31 mm Medell electrode so that the number of electrodes are in this second turn of deep insertion. And we compared electrical stimulation with what the patient can perceive and can compare with his normal ear. Our first series of experiments. We stimulated each electrode but with a fixed rate, 1500 Hertz, in unmodulated pulse strains in each electrode and the patient was able to adapt in the normal hearing note an acoustic signal so that he could pitch much, he could increase or decrease the tonality, the tone of a particular signal and compare it what he was perceiving in the stimulated ear. So we get, could get in this way with this pitch matching experiment something like a Greenwood function. Here the full line in this graph is the Greenwood function and the others is what we found in our patients. In the first basal turn up to 400 degrees we see that the Greenwood function is quite well followed in these patients and they had high frequencies perception and at about 400 degrees they had a perception of about 500-550 hertz. This was well in line what has been published. But by stimulating electrodes deeper in the cochlea, these are the insertion angles up to 720 degrees, patients could perceive also very low tones in this experiment. But there was a lot of variability. And so another group, Rader, published that when he did the same experiments, in fact these are our patients, and this is his experiment, when he did the same experiment, but he adapted the frequency of stimulation to the Greenwood function. That means if an electrode was located at 600 degrees insertion, then he stimulated the electrode with a frequency that was derived from the Greenwood function. So at higher frequencies above 1000 Hz, the stimulation rate electrodes uh, in the second turn got stimulation rates of 400 Hz, 300 Hz, 200 Hz, and and, and, thousand, and, and 100 hertz. And you could see that by doing so, this deep insertion electrode, by stimulating low frequency, got also a perception in these patients that had quite very good following 
of these Greenwood functions. So they could, they could perceive very low tones by stimulating by low frequencies in the apical electrodes. Also, other centers did the same. This is the number of electrodes. This is the most basal electrode. This is the most apical electrode. This is the tone perceived in a single side deafness. This was the pitch matching function with a high stimulation rate. But if we lowered the stimulation rate, then you see that at the apical electrodes, the perceived tone further decreased until 120 hertz in this experiment. Maybe people said it is due to central brain adaptation. And therefore, in a series of five new patients, we did these pitch matching experiments right from the fitting on. And this for the different periods, at fitting, one month, three months, six months, one year. And overall, this patient demonstrates as well, this patient demonstrates too, but the others too. You see that this is inherent at the characteristics of the cochlea. There's no time of brain plasticity right from the first fitting. We get these deep insertion electrodes providing low tones. In, th in this graph, you see that the deep insertion electrodes right from the beginning give a low frequency perception in these patients. So it is inherent by doing low frequency stimulation in the apical turn and not by brain plasticity. We did a second experiment and we did vice versa. That means we provided to the patient in the normal ear a particular tone. And then the patient was asked to change the frequency of stimulation of a particular electrode and to try to match the same pitch. So we provided, for instance, 100 hertz and then we stimulated electrode 1, 2, 3, 4 and the patient could increase or decrease the stimulation rate and say, well, this stimulation rate gives me the same percept of tonality as the tone that you provided. We give an example. The patient has control, for instance, on electrode 2. And then we provided a pure tone, 100 hertz, and then 150 hertz, and then 200 hertz, but we start with 100 hertz. And this particular patient was able to get this 100 hertz sensation in his implanted ear by applying a 50 hertz stimulus. When we provided 200 hertz, again, this patient was able to get the same 200 hertz tone perception by stimulating the second electrode, but now by increasing the frequency stimulation rate up to nearly 200 hertz. So the, by varying the frequency, the patient could change also the percept of tonality. Maybe you can ask, yes, this is a nice experiment, but were patients able to do that? Weren't there patients that did not find a right frequency? Indeed, that happened. And so we expressed the results in another way, and I'll talk to you through the next somewhat complicated slide. We look at the electrodes in the apical turn, the red electrodes. In this graph are again these red electrodes. On the x-axis, this is the frequency that is provided to the patient and now we express it into the chance that the patient is able to get this pitch match. So 100 means that in 100% of the patients they could pitch match it and get this 100 hertz frequency sensation. So we applied 100 hertz and now we see that patients when they stimulate the apical electrodes, at a very high chance in indeed getting this sensation by turning down the frequency rate. And this was the case up to 200 and even 300 hertz. But once beyond it, 
at 400 Hz, patients could not get the same pitch matching again. So the, the apical electrodes were not able to give this sensation of frequency above 400 Hz. Now the contrary. Now we look at the electrodes in the basal turn, the blue electrodes. When we stimulated the blue electrodes, nearly no patient was able to produce a sensation of 100 Hz or 200 Hz. So it is clear from this experiment that in order to get these low tones to produce it, it was necessary to use the apical electrodes. And then you may ask me, yeah, but what did they hear? Is it a low tone that they didn't like? Okay, we asked to the patients, and is it nice? Is it a nice tone? Or is it unpleasant? Is it noisy? Or is it a clear tone? We express this in this graph. And hot colors, warmer colors, is nicer tone, is clear tone, and, and cold colors like blue is not a pleasant tone. When we stimulate the apical electrodes at a low frequency rate, here's the low frequency rate, then we could get a nice sensation. However, if we apply this low frequency in the basal electrodes, then patients could not judge it as a nice sensation. When we stimulate at high frequencies, then it didn't matter. All the electrodes had equally well a quite clear, nice sensation. But we may not forget that by doing so, they got a sensation, but not a low tone sensation. This is an overall at left, an all over graph of the different patients. At right side, it are the individual results. And we pick up one patient here, this patient, and this patient M4. And in this patient, you see that this patient did not like low frequency stimulation. And it turned out, for instance, that in this patient, the application of fine structure stimulation, it means the possibility to have low frequency stimulation at the low tones, yielded a poorer speech understanding than we're using the envelope cis-like stimulation at high frequency rates. What is our conclusion from all these experiments? Clear low tone percept can only be obtained by stimulating in the second turn of the cochlea and only with fine structure stimulation. It means it's a frequency following the frequency. If you apply 100 Hz, then the stimulation should be 100 Hz. When you want to get 200 Hz, you have to stimulate at 200 Hz. And not the 1500 Hz cis-like strategy. So you need a combination of deep electrode insertion to get electrodes in the second turn, and then do a differential stimulation, a varying low frequency stimulation in this apical turn to get this specific clear sensation. And now we'll ask, well, did patients benefit in terms of speech understanding by doing so? We used a series of our patients that had a stable map with a speech strategy of CIS, a CIS continuous interleaf strategy. And then we randomized our patients and in one category of the patients, the blue ones, we stretched the frequency range. So we added low frequency to the information that the patient got, but with a CIS strategy, not with a variable, not with, a, with, with an, an, uh, a variable frequency at the low tones. The other categories, the red ones, they got also the stretching of the frequency. We added the low frequency to their map, but they got fine structure stimulation. At the apical electrodes, they had this low frequency stimulation following the location of the electrode and following 
of the incoming signal. And when we change these patients, uh, at one month, and at three months, and at six months, nothing changed. The speech results were the same. In this graph, we express it as speech reception threshold, which means that lower values are better speech understanding in the eyes. So lower is better here. And you see, as just explained, that the first six months nothing happened. Only at one year we saw that both categories went down, but only at 24 months then there was a clear difference between those giving C strategy in these apical turns and fine structure in the apical turns. So indeed it pays off by stimulating in the apex, providing the low tones at variable low frequency stimulation, patients get a benefit, but it took at least one year to be able to measure the results. However, patients after six months reported already subjective benefit, especially in quality of sound. Also other groups did this type of experiments and analysis. This publication from 2016 compared the angular insertion depth with the speech understanding, speech understanding in quiet and speech understanding in noise. And it is clear that deep insertion above the first basal turn resulted in better speech understanding than when there was a shallower insertion. Also when we are using in this experiment by these authors electrodes with a deeper insertion compared to those with a less deeper insertion, there was a clear benefit for deeper insertion. Another publication of 2016 demonstrated that patients with deep insertion had also better scores, this is a scoring system and lower is better for quality of music appreciation. Patients with electrodes with a deep insertion had better music appreciation. We come to our last point. Cochlear size matters. From the work of the Uppsala group with Helge Rask Andersen, we know in his collection that he has very large cochleas, large cochleas and tiny cochleas. And that's a huge variation in size, with cochlear duct length going from 25 to 36 millimeters, a 50% variation. If we have a large cochlea, it is obvious that to get into this second turn, we need a longer electrode than with a tiny electrode. So the time that we're using the same electrode for everyone is over. We need to measure and to estimate the cochlear duct length and use the electrode length according to the size of the patient. A new technology will help us for that. This is an experiment we show by the group in NYU, by David Landsberger. And he expressed the perceived frequency by stimulating different lengths of electrodes and by stretching the frequency range to the low tones. If you use shorter electrodes, these are shorter electrodes here, if you use shorter electrodes, you try to stretch the frequency range you give to the patient, but the electrodes are shorter, you get a shift from half an octave to one octave from the Greenwood function, and moreover, you're not able to get to these low frequency tones. The orange electrodes here, the orange lines, are from long electrodes that are in the second turn. The other ones are shorter electrodes, and you see that the patients were not able to perceive these low tones, and by adapting specifically the electrodes to the cochlear duct size and by applying the correct frequencies, this is the purple line, 
this is one of our sears you see we, that we get a very nice fitting with the normal physiological greenwood function and that we can obtain these low tones in a natural way how to measure this cochlear duct length is not so easy but new technology like the use of optoplan allows us by having more precise measurements of the cochlear size and translating this individual measured size to a table where it is easy to choose your electrode this is for the 31 electrode 28 24 and the 20 electrode you get for an individual patient when you use these electrodes the insertion depth and the corresponding frequency and angular insertion depth and you can define that for each electrode if you opt for instance in this patient uh, that has a cochlear duct length that only allows that allows this electrode for each frequency you get a specific frequency allocation that will help your audiologist to do a place frequency adapted map for these patients and a lot of evidence is coming up showing that this indeed results in better speech understanding and a better quality of speech perception. We come to the end of our presentation with our final conclusions that we presented at the beginning already. We showed that spiral ganglion bodies indeed extend in the second term. We showed that these cell bodies can be stimulated equally well than in other parts of the cochlea. We showed that stimulating these electrodes with phase locking system, so with low frequencies and varying low frequencies in this second turn of the cochlea, will improve speech understanding and will enhance even the quality of the sound. We showed that in order to give to the patient a sensation of low tones under 400 Hz, the only way is to stimulate in the second turn and this with low frequency stimulations. If patients had already a map and we want to change them, our mind needs time, so it will need 12 months before you can show this advantage but it is then very consistent in speech understanding by using these apical electrodes and by giving this fine structure stimulation. And finally, we want to get our electrodes in the cochlea and the time of one size fits all is over. We need to measure the individual cochlea and adapt our electrode length accordingly so that we know that our electrode indeed gets in this second turn. So, final conclusion, is it worthwhile to do deep stimulation, a deep electrode insertion and do low frequency stimulation in this second turn? Yes, because you will provide to these patients better speech understanding, nicer quality of hearing. Thank you for your attention.